Here are some reminders to help you get the most out of your Dive Math 7.6 CDs. First, work the problems with me. Work every practice problem that I work and write down everything that I write down. Remember too that my practice problems, they aren't the same as the practice problems in that particular lesson that you're doing. They're similar, but they're not the same. So if you need some extra practice, do the ones in the book as well. Next, pause and rewind until you understand. This is one of the things that makes doing a lesson on a CD so much better than a live classroom is that you can rewind the teacher. You can just rewind and rewind until you understand a particular concept. So make sure and take advantage of that. Also, remember when you're working the practice problems, do a couple of them with me. Then if you think you understand how to do the next one, pause the CD, work it yourself, fast forward to the answer. If you got it right, great, go on to the next one. If you got it incorrect, rewind and see what you did wrong. You also need to make sure and do the facts practice, mental math, and problem solving section that's at the top of each lesson. Do one of those at least once per week. And those facts practice tests, you need to make at least a 90% or greater on those. Otherwise, you need to do them again. You should also time yourself on those facts practice tests and try to beat your previous time. Also remember to do all the problems in every problem set and also do all the tests that are in the test booklet and there are instructions in the test booklet as to when to take those tests. It's important to show your work as well. In Math 7-6 there's lots of mental math, meaning math that you do in your head, multiplication, addition, subtraction, and division. So do most of it in your head, but when you need to show your work, don't hesitate to show your work. Especially if you're getting a particular problem wrong repeatedly, that probably means you're not showing enough work. And finally, have a good attitude. The best math program in the world won't make a bit of difference if you don't have a good, hard-working attitude. Be thankful that you have a nice computer with speakers and a cool CD lesson to work on and to learn from. Not everybody has that advantage that you have. God has given you a great opportunity here to have an excellent education and part of it is up to you as to your attitude and what you make of this opportunity. So work hard, do your best to learn these lessons and I know that God will bless you for that. Lesson 5 is titled Order of Operations Part 1. You'll be doing Part 2 much later in the book after you've had lots of time to practice the material you're going to learn in this lesson. Now when you hear the word operation, basically what they're talking about is addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And before we get started, let's go over some rules that are very important to understand when you're doing operations. For addition and subtraction, you should add or subtract, like I have written on the board there, add or subtract. Um, I didn't write subtract, but you should do that as well in pairs. So if you have more than two numbers in an operation, add or subtract in pairs, working from left to right. And then multiplication and division, again, if it's multiplication or division, work from left to right and you can multiply or divide in pairs. Work with a pair of numbers at a time, working from left to right. And then if there's parentheses in that operation, do the work inside the parentheses first. Okay, so you should write these rules down and remember them. And the best way to learn them and to apply them is to do some problems. So let's go ahead and start doing some practice problems now. So look at this problem. 15 plus 2 minus 5. Let's think about our rule for addition and subtraction. We add in pairs working from left to right. And so let's just do 15 plus 2 first. That's 17. And then bring the minus 5 down and the way we work these problems is we work them vertically. I think that's the best way to do these problems because it helps you keep things organized on your paper as well as in your head. And we see that this 15 and this 2, we combined those, added them, in other words, to make 17. And then we bring the negative 5 down. And so now we have to do a subtraction problem, 17 minus 5. And that equals 12. And so that's our answer. Look at practice problem B. We have parentheses there. Remember what we do. We always do inside the parentheses first. And it doesn't matter if, it's, if there's addition in front of it, multiplication, division, subtraction, whatever. 
always do the parentheses first. So we have 2 times 3, and so that is equal to 6, and so we can put the 13 and the minus sign, 13 minus 6, we bring those down, and 13 minus 6 is 7, and so that's our answer. Look at this problem, 16 divided by 2 times 2. And remember, after you've done one or two of these problems, pause the CD and you try to figure the problem out without listening to me and then fast forward to see if you got it right. So this problem, again, we have parentheses there, so let's do that first. 2 times 2, that is equal to 4, and so we have 16 divided by 4. And if you need to work that out, you can. Hopefully you know that 16 divided by 4 is equal to 4. And we can use our relationships with multiplication and division. We know that we can multiply the quotient by the divisor 4 times 4, and that gets us back to the dividend 16. And so that is the correct answer, 4. Look at this problem. Let's do this one, 60 divided by 4 times 3. Again, we have parentheses, so we need to do the multiplication first. 4 times 3 is 12, and so we bring the 60 down and the division symbol. 60 divided by 12, that equals 5. And we can always check our work by multiplying the quotient that we got, 5, by the divisor, which is 12. 5 times 12 does equal 60, so that is correct. Look at practice problem E, 125 divided by 5 divided by 5. Now we have two divisions that we have to do there. Remember we work left to right on these, so there's no parentheses, so we don't have to worry about doing that part first or anything, so we start left to right. 125 divided by 5, now maybe you already know that that's equal to 25, but on a fairly large number like that you might need to do some division, so you could do that over to the side. 5 into 125, 5 goes into 12, 2 times, 10, 12 minus 10 is 2, bring the 5 down, 5 times 5 is 25, and so we see that that result is 25. And so what we do here on our operation then, 125 divided by 5, we put a 25 here, and then we bring the division symbol and then that 5 down. 25 divided by 5 is equal to 5. And so that's our answer. We worked in pairs there. We moved from left to right. The next problem, we have some parentheses there, so we need to do that operation inside the parentheses first. 12 divided by 2, that just equals 6. And so we can bring the 36 and the division symbol down, and then 6. 36 divided by 6, that equals 6. And so that's our answer. Look at this problem. This is a new type. 10 minus 1 divided by 3. It's a vertical looking problem instead of horizontally. We could rewrite that. It looks like the other ones. 10 minus 1 and then just put a division symbol and a 3 there and that makes it look like the other ones. But let's just leave it like it is and let's think about what we should do here. And one thing to keep in mind here is add, if there's some addition to do above the fraction bar, add that first and then simplify, then do your division. It's the same as working it left to right like we have done over here that I'm circling right now, um, but let's just keep that in mind too when it's written as a fraction, when it looks like a fraction, add above the fraction and if you had to do some addition below the fraction, do those two operations first, then do your division. So we have 10 minus 1 is 9, and then we divide by 3. 9 divided by 3 is just equal to 3, and so that's our answer. Okay, let's do one more problem that's similar to practice problem G, and we have 6 plus 4 over 6 minus 4. So let's do our addition above the bar, the fraction bar, do that first, and then do, do the addition below the fraction bar, and then we'll do our division. So 6 plus 4 is 10, over 6 minus 4 is 2, 10 divided by 2 is just equal to 5, and so that's our answer, 5. 
Another way to think about problems G and H is that you can put what's above the fraction bar and below the fraction bar. If there's an operation to do there, you can put that inside parentheses, and you always do the parentheses first. So like look at G, you could have done 10 minus 1, put that in parentheses, you do that first, and like on H, you could have thought of 6 plus 4 and 6 minus 4 as inside parentheses. And so that's another thing you can do on problems like this where there's a fraction bar is you can, in your head, just pretend like there's parentheses, or you can write them like I've written them on the board here. And you would want to do the same thing as if you wrote it out horizontally, like on problem G, you'd put that 10 minus 1 inside parentheses. Okay, well that's all for lesson five.